This morning's Mass is being offered for Francis Tice. Our entrance antiphon, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. It is he who forgives all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. We have uh, some seminarians in our audience. They're a little homeless right now, so we've taken them in for a little while. So they're in the congregation if you hear responses. So uh, at least we have a little audience here, but uh, good morning to all who are watching from home. So my brothers and sisters, as we gather this morning, let us call to mind our sins and that the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal mysteries, we may be gladdened by their full effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord, as certain as the dawn is his coming, and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like the rain, like spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this reason I smote them through the prophets, I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice, and knowledge of of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. It is mercy I desire, and not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense thoroughly. Wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should I offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. My sacrifice, O God, is a contrite spirit, a heart contrite and humbled, O God, you will not spurn. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness, by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocausts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. O God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. 
I fast twice a week, and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we have this great teaching, especially during Lent, the necessity of humility. Because as we, part of the Christian life, as we grow closer to our Lord, as we grow closer to our God, we grow closer to what really is good, what really is true, what's beautiful, and we get to know and love that. We get to know and love that in a very intimate way. And then when we look at ourselves and we realize just how distant we are from that, and that's not something we want to run from, we just want to say, wow, I am so far from the goal. And that's okay. That's a really good thing. Because that gives us, it propels us to seek that virtue, propels us to go deeper, to grow closer with our Lord. So I was um, thinking about especially confession, because this is clearly aimed towards confessing our sins. So that takes that humility of ours. Humility is just standing in the truth of who we are in front of God and being kind of okay with that and saying, well, this is where I'm at. I need to get rid of these parts. I need to grow in this area. Or the Lord is doing some good things in this area. I need to keep that going. But as Jesus, as we began our gospel, Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. Too often I run into people who have not been to confession for years or say, um, you know, a priest told me I don't need to go because I'm too old and I don't sin. I don't know where that comes from. That's not scriptural. It's not part of the tradition of the church at all. In fact, the precept of the church is that we confess at least once a year, preferably during Lent in preparation for Easter. So what's going on behind that? I don't know. I don't know. But to say the importance of confession is as important today as it was when Jesus gave us that great sacrament. So I just want to acknowledge two things. So you can say, well, Father, first of all, how do we go to confession in such difficult times when uh, lockdown is imminent? Well, might be. That's what the paper was saying today. Um, So how do we do this? Well, there's uh, two ways. So, as our Holy Father, uh, Pope Francis, yesterday was uh, mentioning, uh, reiterating our catechism, the constant teaching of the Church, it's paragraph 1452, if you want to look it up at home, that uh, in times when we may not be able to access the sacrament of confession, we uh, make a prayer where we confess our sins directly to God in the comfort of our homes or wherever we are, and you make a perfect act of contrition And then you make a resolution to go to individual confession as soon as you are able to, as soon as all these restrictions are lifted. So we confess our sins to God, we make a perfect act of contrition, and we make a firm resolution that as soon as we can go to confession, individual confession, we're going. So that perfect act of contrition is what... uh, It's when we're sorry for our sins for having offended God and not um, only just for the punishments that might come to us. That's why we have the act of contrition scripted. So it's, um, oh my God, I'm heartily sorry for having offended you. I detest all my sins because I dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell, but most of all because they offend you, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. That's a perfect act of contrition. When we're sorrowful, that we've offended God. So that's one option. If we want to stay at home, and you have every right to stay at home, um, confess your sins, pray the act of contrition with that perfect contrition, and make a resolution. As soon as I can go to individual confession, I'm going. The second option, second option, we will be hearing confession today is Saturday, March 21st, So we will be hearing confessions today at 2.30, and we have set up a way that's completely no contact. 
because we want your safety, our safety, and we want to make this place a place of forgiveness and of mercy and not of disease. So we have set up um, doors where you don't have to touch anything. You can walk right in from your vehicle. Uh, the doors will be open. You just come in and we three priests will be there at 2.30. Um, you don't touch anything. We have, um, you can only have 10 people in the, in the hallway at once. So only uh, nine can be waiting while we have um, at least someone, we'll have a volunteer um, coordinating all of this. Uh, we'll have the Blessed Sacrament exposed so you can come and visit Jesus while you are waiting in line. And we'll have um, stations set up six feet apart while you're waiting in line, so you're maintaining the six feet distance. And um, then we priests will, we're kind of like in corrals. There's no better way to say that. We're, we're in these chairs. We have screens, um, so we can't see you. And then we're basically just roped off. So please do not cross that rope. We're trying to maintain everybody's six feet distance um, and no contact. So um, if you're feeling brave um, in these we don't know how long we'll be able to keep doing that. Um, so we're going to be doing that this afternoon at 9.30. And we'll also be doing that, or, excuse me, today is at 2.30, tomorrow's at 9.30. Um, so check the website for that. Um, but we are looking forward to that um, as much as we can, those individual confessions. And then just to clarify, um, so Pope Francis is, he has issued a letter, as so has the Vatican. Um, there's, the news articles are just making, um, I wish they had more faith and understanding of our faith. Uh, one news article I read, I forget which, who was out of, it doesn't matter. Um, it was something about like, Pope Francis just forgave everybody's sins. Well, no, he didn't. Um, all he said is we need to be creative and look for ways to make this more available should the situation worsen. So for him, he's in a country of complete lockdown and all he is saying is, in our country, in countries where it's completely locked down, how can we best serve this? We need to discuss this. That's all he has said. So this news article I read said, oh, Pope Francis forgave everybody's sins. No, he did not. The ordinary way is still individual confession. So we're making that available today, Saturday at 2.30. We're making it available tomorrow, Sunday at 9.30 a.m., as long as we can. So it's no, con no contact uh, feel free to come. We'd be happy to see you. I saw a few people yesterday when we had it. It was actually uh, really heartwarming to see uh, people outside <laughs> of the rectory. So it was good. But also remember, if you were afraid and we want to stay at home, please stay at home and do the uh, prayer to God where you tell him your sins, make the act of contrition, and make that firm resolve that as soon as I can go to confession, I'm going. What we give, what is uh, confessed, is redeemed. So we want to give as much over to our Lord this Lenten season as we can, especially our hearts, so we can experience that joy at Easter, as imperfect as it may be this year. We still want to experience the joy of the resurrection. So turning to God, and now in these needs, we present him um, the, the needs of our hearts. So we pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Bernard Hebda, and all leaders of the Church. We pray that they may have the wisdom and the fortitude and the perseverance to guide us all through these challenging and uncertain times. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all government officials. We pray for their conversion to Christ and his holy Catholic Church and that Jesus' love for them may animate all their legislative decisions. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all those who are sick, those who are suffering, and those who feel most alone and abandoned. Especially we pray for... Um, the sick who are in nursing homes, who are in complete lockdown, who have not seen anybody for a long time, we pray that they may know um, the nearness of Christ in this time. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all health care workers. We pray in thanksgiving for their sacrifices. We pray in thanksgiving for their heroism in this time. Pray for perseverance, for patience, and uh, those that those who are being served uh, may express that gratitude as well. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and diaconate, especially from our parish. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for all those who have died, those who will die today, that they may sleep in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, you hear all the prayers of your children. 
those spoken and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Please answer them all according to your will, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, by whose grace it it comes to pass that we may approach your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handing them on, we may offer you fitting homage through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For through bodily fasting, you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, 
Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay, qui tolis peccanta mundi, miserere novis. On you stay, Qui tolis peccantam hundi, miserere nobis. Qui tolis peccantam hundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion antiphon. The tax collector stood at a distance, beating his breast and saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And again, for those at home, uh, to do a spiritual communion when you uh, may not receive communion in person. So uh, I want you to Google spiritual communion. The first website to pop up is an EWTN prayer. So I want you to look that up and uh, pull that up and we can pray along together. I printed that out here. So spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. May we truly revere, O merciful God, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us. 
and may we always partake of them with abundant faith in our heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.